This is Greg from Purpose Blogger, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create an ebook cover in Canva. Canva is a tool for graphic design and it makes creating designs for all sorts of different platforms really easy. So it really is a great tool for taking on simple design projects and creating marketing assets for your business. Now today we're going to be talking about an ebook cover and creating an ebook cover is going to be easier than creating a traditional book cover. With a traditional book cover you would have to worry about the number of pages and how that was going to influence the size of the spine and then you also have the back cover design to worry about. With an ebook cover it's just a flat image so it is a much easier design. However if you are interested in how to design a more traditional book cover I will link a tutorial in the upper right that you might want to check out on how to create a book cover in Canva for Kindle Direct Publishing. But in this lesson, this video, we're going to talk about an ebook cover. So there are no size dimensions that you have to start with for an ebook cover. You could even come in here under Create a Design and choose Custom Dimensions and put whatever height and width you want in either pixels or inches. However, you do want to think about what is that final viewing device your viewers are going to be using. Are they going to be viewing on a desktop? Is it going to be something like a Kindle? Is it going to be something like an iPad or their phone? So you want to think about that. Uh, for this ebook here, we're just going to use one of the ready-made Canva starting templates. And so they have sizes for all sorts of different projects. And so we're just going to type in ebook or book cover and we'll get this ebook cover and that's 512 by 800 pixels. So that's what we're going to use for this design. But again, think about who your viewer is, what device they're going to be viewing on, and use that to guide what sort of design uh, template you want to start with, what sort of size, and then the process of the design is going to be the same. Now it's showing me all these templates. It's going to show you these templates if you start from this the center menu up here. So whenever you search for something up here in this center menu on that home screen, it's then going to show you all those templates. So I'll come in here again. It shows me these templates, and I can launch one of these templates. But here's what you have to know. If you launch one of these templates, you're not locked into these templates. You can still very easily change it. And now let me just go back to the home screen for a second and show you. If you were to create your design from over here, from this left menu, then it does not start you from that temp a template. It just starts you with a blank project. But you can do the same thing, essentially, because you still have over here in the left menu all these categories and all these different templates. And then you can easily add a a template in just by clicking on it and if you want a new template just go ahead and click on a new template and it's going to overwrite the template you have on the page so you have something here click it and it's going to overwrite a new template so so once you have your project open it's just about deciding what your starting point is now of course you're free to start still totally from scratch or maybe you have your design inspiration from a book cover you've seen outside of canva that's fine or something else so you don't have to use a template you can start from a totally blank blank project However, sometimes these templates do give you a good jumping off point and you don't have to start from zero. So maybe I like this design here, so I was going to use one of these designs, but then I could look through here and find any other design that I want. So if there are categories in here that sort of make sense and are in line with the project that you're doing, then that would be a great place to start searching for a template that's going to work. You also can search up here. So if you're doing a project that's about computers, Maybe you type something in like this, and you're not always going to get good results, but sometimes you'll get good results. Uh, so it just depends. you got to experiment around. And then also I want to show you that over each template, if you just hover for a second, you'll see these three dots. And if you click on those dots, it's going to show you all the keywords that are associated with, with that book cover. So this is kind of helpful because it gives you an idea of some of the keywords that templates are tagged with. And then you can search by those templates, I mean, you can search by those keywords if it's something that makes sense. So in other words, even when I'm in here, I can just click on minimalist and it will then sort this by minimalist designs, designs that are tagged with that minimalist tag. Now, of course, you can also just search up here. So if I did something like fun, it could search by that. It would search by that or maybe I'm going to do colorful. So you have all of these different options and all of these different ways that you can search. For example, maybe you knew you wanted something that was an illustration and wasn't really based on 
pixel based photos. So you could do something like that. And then you're just going to search through here and find designs you like. So maybe I like this design, but maybe I want to try another one out too. So maybe I click on this one and add that to a new page. So now I have two designs I can work on for my ebook cover and then see which one I like. So of course, once you clicked on a template, you still have to come in here obviously and customize it with any changes you want to make. So you're not locked into this. For example, this one here, I'm going to come here and change this. So let's say I'm doing my book on, uh, let's see, creating an ebook cover with Canva. Now, if I do that, the text is taking up more space than I really want it to. And because this is such a decorative font, if I come in here and I adjust the line spacing, it's going to start to blend together. So I think in this case, I would just want to come in here and choose a different font. So I'm going to come in here and choose this Pacifico font because I've used this before and I think this might work. If I still want that hand uh, handwritten look, I might try something like this. That's going to be way too big. So you just come in here and adjust down the size. So again, you still experiment around and you can still make all these design decisions. And maybe I do want my line height to be a little bit bigger. And so you're doing all these things and making all these decisions about your book. Uh, so for example, let me get rid of this. And this might be a good place to just drop the Canva logo right there. So maybe I'll go under Elements, choose Canva, and I will drop in this Canva logo, then I'll just use my Alt as I drag in. So I drag in from the center. And if I Alt drag, it's going to resize from the center. And so get things into position. Of course, you'd come in here and customize things like the name. So you'd want that to be obviously your name or the author of the book. So you can type that in there. And so this is just about now actually designing your project once you have the jumping off point. Uh, you may decide, I don't want all the elements that are in here, so I don't really need that. I don't really need any of this. This is going to be pretty minimalist design. So something like this. And then, of course, you can play around with the positioning. You can decide whether you like the design elements here. Uh, this is a background element here. Well, actually, it's just a picture, I think, because it's size beyond the Canva, the canvas. Um, but so if I get rid of that and if I, if I actually went over to backgrounds, I could see what the other backgrounds were and I could decide hmm, maybe I want to put a landscape in there. I kind of like that. So you could do something like that. And then I see that there was more text in here. I didn't realize it, but I like it. So let's get rid of that. And I'm going to put my name actually down here. So control A and I'll put my name down there because I like that positioning better. And then, of course, if you decided you wanted to center this or something, I could drag it and just snap it to the center something like that. So all these different ways you have of just coming here and customizing your book. Uh, so that would be one design. And then maybe I wanted to try this one too. Uh, I'll point out a couple of resources you have that can help you with your designs if you find yourself stuck. For example, I like this design here, but let me, let me just do my title again. So creating an ebook with Canva. Now I like that, but it's a little big. So let me bring it down to that, something like that. I don't think I need this top text. I will take this up a little bit. This is where I'm going to have my name here. So again, I'll just put my name down here. I can't type tonight. I keep hitting the wrong keys. So then if I wanted to change this color palette, I could come in here and click on that. And I'm going to use that Canva logo color. And your document will save. One of the cool things is your project will save all the current colors in your document. So since I have this logo up here, I have that color saved in my color palette. So that is just a helpful thing that Canva does. Now I think it does this on the pro and the free version. I'm on the pro version of Canva. I think it does this on the free version as well, but if not, uh, sorry about that. But so you can do that. And then here, here's something that's helpful. So this is cool and this, I think this works well, but if you get stuck with things like fonts or colors, there are there are tons of resources out there, of course, but Canva also has some of its own resources. So let me just see if I can remember here. So Canva.com, if you go to Canva.com colors, they have some pretty cool color resources. So they have this color wheel where you can pick uh, complementary colors and things like that. Color meanings will tell you different uh, different color meanings if you're looking to, to 
to learn what color might be appropriate for your project. And then you have palette generator and pa color palette ideas. So I'm just going to come into this color palette ideas r right here or color palettes. And then if I jump back to my design for a second on any color, if you click on that color and then you click on the color swatch here, it's going to show you the six digit hex code right there. And so I'll copy that. And I'm going to bring that over to color palettes because I'm going to do use that as my search field. And when I do that, it brings up all these color palettes that are sort of related and making use of that hex color or something similar. And so then if I look at this right here, I could say, OK, let me come into this and then it's going to let you just copy these hex codes. So if I copy this code here for maybe this lighter color here and I jump back to my ebook here and then I say hmm, these leaves here. I wanted to come in and maybe adjust some of those colors. So if you come in here and you search for any color up here, actually in the field here, it will automatically find that color. And then you can go ahead and bring those colors into your designs. So this is pretty cool, but it's just another way of finding colors easily that work well together. So you can use any of those color resources. And again, I'll, I'll put that link down in the description for this video. But so they have that and they also have something called font pairing. So canva.com. And if I go to font com font combinations, so again, I'll paste this down in the description also. But so then they have starting fonts. And so if you come in here and you select a starting font, so let's say you come down here and say, I'm going to use this font right here. Then what it's going to do is it's going to search and it's going to find some font combinations that work well with that font. And then it's going to show you a visual uh, representation of those different fonts. So it's showing you old standard as a font that might pair well together. It's showing you this DIN condensed web. And so it's just a good way to find good font combinations if you're not great at pairing fonts. And so another piece of advice I would say to you is keep it simple, keep it minimalistic, minimalistic if you can. Uh, one font is sometimes enough or a variation of one font. Two fonts is usually almost always enough. If you start getting more and more fonts, it tends to make your design muddled and it doesn't really look as good. But again, you can use this Canva font, Canva font combinations. I'll link this below. It's a great way of finding fonts that pair well together. And this color, uh, these color um, resources that Canva has, let me back out so you can just get to this original page here one more time. This is also a great way of finding colors that pair well together. And there are a couple different tools in here. You can check them all out. And then again, you come back in here, create your ebook, create different design variations if you want to see what you like. And it's just that easy to create an ebook in Canva, or I should say an ebook cover in Canva. And I do have a video of, on how you create a full ebook. If you want to check that out, I'll link that up above right now. Uh, but this is just for creating an ebook cover. And of course, when you're done, you can come over to download and you can download that as a JPEG, as a PNG. Uh, or a PDF if you end up putting multiple pages in here. So it's really easy, and that is how you create an ebook cover in Canva. I hope you liked this video. If you do, please consider hitting the subscribe button below, and I'll see you soon.